Season's breedings, friend. Um, what? Season's breedings. I don't know what that means, but I, I would like to leave. Leave. Offspring? No! Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, when it comes to a creature collecting game, even one like Pal World, with a million other mechanics and parts of the game even aside from the creatures themselves, there is a large emphasis on the pals themselves. Of course, while you can use weapons and even guns as the player, the true combat will always revolve around the pals themselves, and as such, people of course want to know how to create the very best of the best when it comes to their cute little companions. Today we're going to talk in depth about breeding using a lot of numbers, so strap in and prepare your math cap. I'll do my best not to get bogged down in the depth of it and the numbers of everything and make it relatively consumable and understandable as best as I can, so let's get on into this. We've talked a good deal about breeding before in Pal World and about how to make your pal strong in general, but thanks to a mammoth amount of effort from a community member, we have actual stats from data mined files combined with testing with over a thousand pals, which provides some extremely reliable numbers to actually work with when talking about the likelihood of everything when it comes to IVs, individual values. That said, IVs are only a part of this, so we'll start by talking about breeding with passive skills, then we will round up all the information that you need on IVs, then we will finally talk about the ideal breeding process, keeping both of those things in mind. Before we even dive into that though, let's cover the automation of cake, as cake is heavily required for breeding en masse. In your ranch, you want chickpea for eggs, and these can be found in these locations, mozzarella for milk, which can be found in this location, and bee guard for honey, which are super difficult to catch in the wild until you overlevel them significantly, so they're much easier to breed, and the easiest combo to make one is tansy, who spawn here, and malpaca, who spawn here. The other two ingredients for cake are berries, which you get from a plantation, as well as flour, which you can get from the wheat plantation, and then funneling the wheat through a mill after the fact. Increasing cake production is as simple as multiplying the amount of each of these pals and functions to increase the ingredients that you get, then getting a good kindling pal for the actual cooking process. Moving on then, as far as passive skills, these can be massive. Bonuses of up to 30% in some cases, even 50% if you can't artisan for work speed, but mostly today is going to be focused around combat. A pal can have up to four passive skills as an individual, and when you breed together pals with passive skills, the child has a chance of inheriting each passive that the parents have. That said, there's quite a lot of misunderstanding going around with this mechanic and breeding, so let's clear it up. For whatever reason, just the way the game works, the percentage chance of a passive skill passing down to a child depends on how many passive skills the parents have. Logically speaking, you would think that would mean that having two parents that have the exact same four perfect passive skills would have the highest chance possible of creating a child with the same four skills. But that's actually not the case. For whatever reason, there seems to be a sort of set mutation percentage. A mutation in Pal World is when anything is given to the child that did not come from one of the parents. This includes things like any passive skill that appears on a child randomly. For whatever reason, the mutation chance on passive skills seems to go up when the parents have more skills. If eight skill slots are filled between both of the parents, there is a higher chance of a mutation happening instead of one of the skills passing down, which just results in a lesser chance of actually passing down the things that you want to pass down. On top of that, there is no inherent bonus to having a skill show up a second time on a second parent, which weirdly results in more skills having lower chances to be passed down. To be more specific, when you're trying to pass down passive skills from two parents, both with the same four skills, you have a 50% chance of one trait being passed down from one of the parents, but only around a 6% chance of all four traits transferring, which is of course extremely low. The correct way to breed instead of this seems to be if each parent has two separate designs desired passive skills, meaning between the two parents, each one has two skills that you want, and every one of the four combined skills is something that you want to pass down to a child, making their full roster of skills. This method instead has a 66% chance of having a single one of the passives passed down, but a whopping just under 20% chance of all four passives, which is just under one in five. That's way better, just over three times higher likelihood than breeding the two four passive parents together. So to put it simply, just don't breed with parents that have four skills if you're trying to pass them down. It reduces your chances of bringing them down to the child a ridiculous amount. With that then, let's move on to the second section here, and obviously the meteor one, which is IVs. I know a lot of people have been asking if Pal World has IVs, like other creature collecting games tend to do, and the simple answer is yes, but they don't work quite how you might expect, and they are a lot less impactful than, let's say, 
Pokemon. You don't say that name. But they do exist, and we now have actual numbers for them. To try and simplify it all then, the numbers we are looking at here are HP, attack, and defense. Except it's slightly more than that, because attack is actually split into two categories, melee attack and ranged attack, with the attack number that you see in the game as a singular number, being whichever is higher of the two for the species. But it just doesn't tell you at all in the game which one it is, which is a bit weird, but it is also in early access, so maybe they'll change that later. When a pal spawns into the world, regardless of species, it has a set of base stats. These stats are actually identical for every pal at a theoretical level zero, but of course everything spawns at level one, and that's where it gets a bit more complex. Every species then has a unique value that it gains in each of these stats per level, which is identical across the same species of pal. Then we have the IVs. When you remove the base stats, which are known, and you remove the species growth values, which again, we know, we just talked about, what is left is the variance between different members of a specific species, and that variance is the IVs, the individual values. There is an IV calculator out there for Power World that you can use now too, and here is a cute little SWE used as an example here. The IVs in this game, referred to as talent numbers here, are a hidden number each pal spawns in with from 1 to 100, with those numbers directly translated to a bonus from 0 to 30 percent on each stat. 1 out of 100 is a 0 percent bonus. 100 out of 100 is 30 percent, meaning a perfect IV in any of these stats is a 30 percent bonus to that stat, but only on the species growth rate. The base stats that we talked about to begin with are never affected by this difference, and because of this, the actual effect at level 50 is more like 20 to 25 percent between garbage IVs and maxed out IVs depending on the species. That said, the average is the average for a reason, and there is a high percentage of pals that spawn right around that 50 out of 100 mark. And because of the base stat stuff, the difference between a 50 out of 100 and a 100 out of 100 pal is actually only around 10% effectiveness on that stat. So essentially you can hunt for perfect IVs, but even if you do, you're only gaining around 10% bonus in each stat compared to an average pal of the same species. Also worth noting that alpha world bosses do seem to spawn with a minimum of 50 out of 100 in all IVs, so literally right on the average, if not higher, so you literally can't go wrong with the alphas when it comes to catching them. That said, let's bring it back around to breeding now, as the normal way that you would farm for perfect IVs in this kind of game is in fact breeding. When breeding two parents together, there is a 30% chance that the child will inherit one of the IVs from one of the two parents. Let's say you had two perfect HP King Paka that you were breeding into a baby, it would have a 30% chance then of having perfect HP on the baby. If you have one perfect HP King Paka and one absolute minimum HP King Paka, then you only have a 15% chance of minimum HP IVs and a 15% chance of maximum, which is 30% for it to be either one of the parents, with the 70% remaining being mutation chance, meaning it could literally be any number from the 1 to 100 if that happens. There was a rumor going around before that it was always averaged between both parents' IV numbers, but that was proven false very quickly as it's easy to do with something so specific, so now we know that this instead is the case, just a 30% chance of it being one of the parents split in the middle between each parent. The thing is, that 30% chance of passing down parent IVs is actually really, really rough when you consider that that is a chance of passing down just one of the three IVs because that has to happen three times. Once for HP, once for defense, and once for either ranged or melee attack depending on the species. For whatever reason, breeding IVs does not transfer both ranged and melee attacks, which inherently does make it weaker than wild pals in its own way. It will only do one of these two stats. So a perfect breed would be three IVs passed down from the parents, which is a 30% chance followed by a 30% chance, and then a third 30% chance, which evens out at a cool 2.7% chance. 2.7% at having all three IVs being from one of the two parents, means, which means that even to get to this point, you would need two parents with all three perfect IVs to begin with. All this to say, personally, breeding for IVs within Pal World is definitely not worth it in the short term at least. Maybe as a really long term project if you really definitely want to create the absolute perfect buddy, but a 2.7% chance at being 10% stronger that also requires you to get insanely lucky before you even have the point where it gets to that point with the parents ready to go, it's just a hell of a lot to ask of people. That said, let's talk about all of this in context together now in one specific function and go over the technical best practices for breeding a singular pal that would have the perfect four passive seals as well as perfect IVs and the likelihood of all that happening in the first place. Well, first we have to talk parents. For the highest chance at an ideal perfect child, you want each parent to have only two passive skills for there not to be any overlap between these skills as far as doubling up. And of course, all of the skills that they have to be the ones that 
that you want to transfer down to the child. Doing that gives you just under a 20% chance at a child with all four passives. If you also want perfect IVs on the same child, then you need those parents to also have perfect IVs all the way through with two of the passive skills each for the best chance at a perfect child, which in itself is a hell of a task just to get those parents. But even if you do that, you have a 30% chance to pass down one IV and a measly 2.7% chance to pass down all three. Altogether, that means in that perfect 100% ideal breeding setup, which again, you'd have to get insanely lucky to even get to in the first place, the child will have right around a 6% chance of having all four passives and even one IV passed down for the parents. And a measly 0.53% chance to have all four passives and all three IVs passed down. And even then, you only pass down one of the two attack IVs as mentioned earlier, so it is a bit lacking. So even in the most ideal possible situation, where you have the absolutely perfect possible parents, you have just over a one in 189 shot of an egg containing all of these things. And now you hopefully see what I mean when it comes to the question of are IVs worth pursuing in this way? Passive skills can be worth up to a whopping 30% of a stat. Some of them are 20 percent in multiple stats. The only exclusion is that passives can't really boost HP, so that one specific IV is actually extra special, but again, passives are just way more powerful than IV differences are, and breeding down a pal with four perfect passives is a nearly 1 in 5 chance. Breeding down one with all three IVs matching the parents is only a 1 in 37 chance, and when you put those together, it makes it an absolutely insanely low probability to actually make happen. So my personal recommendation is just focus on your passive skills. Focus on your statue of power bonuses, your pal essence condensed upgrades as well, all of these are much easier to acquire, less time consuming, and more impactful on the actual power of your pal than IVs. But this is how the system works, and how to game it in your favor as much as possible, even if the probability is still pretty not great. I hope you've all enjoyed this then, mostly just a chat about the intricacies of breeding that the community has been working out over the last couple of weeks, with big thanks to Reddit user Blah Abel, who did a lot of data mining and compiling of information from various people to find a lot of these statistics, and really just help expand our understanding understanding of the game as a community as a whole. Let me know your thoughts on all of this then. Do you like this system where you essentially are incentivized to worry less about IVs and breeding perfect ones? Or are you someone who is obsessed with the ideal numbers on your pal and these low likelihood chances of small bonuses are just going to be a massive thorn in your side? They're not going to stop you, they're just going to slow you down and make it more tedious. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye